So I have some AI search and SEO news for you. ChatGPT just released a brand new paper showing the usage inside of their platform and showing exactly what how users are using ChatGPT on a daily basis. In fact, this is data from over 700 million weekly active users. So there's a lot of little insights we can pull from this to help us drive more brand awareness inside of ChatGPT and ultimately do AI search optimization. So a couple things here. Uh, first is 49% of the messages within ChatGPT are what are considered asking intent. Okay. So this is going to be sometimes very informational type of questions, but there's also going to be commercial related questions. I'm going to show you exactly the types of queries that we want to focus on. Informational queries are very dangerous in the context of ChatGPT because if ChatGPT, based on its core training data, already knows the answer, it is not going to, it's not going to use retrieval and it's not going to go and grab more information to enhance that answer. So meaning it's just going to answer the question without needing any citations. Those are the queries you want to stay away from. Those are the really dangerous ones. The ones we want to focus on are the ones that are much fresher and the, and the queries that chat GPT simply cannot respond to in any accurate way without having to go and retrieve answers. Okay. So we want to focus on the questions where retrieval will be used. That is the key. Now, here are a couple examples of what would be considered asking intent. Who are the best insert product category for use case and then rank by criteria? Okay. So. Who are the best SEO content optimization tools for agencies? Rank by price, features, you know, et cetera. Okay. These types of queries are going to surface brands. And these are the queries that we A, want to be tracking and B, we want our brand to appear in these AI generated responses specifically for these types of queries. Another one is, you know, what are the best alternatives to brand or compare brand A versus brand B and C? Okay. These are the types of queries where we need to be surfaced. These are the queries that whatever brand we're working on needs to be popping up. You have to be tracking these because if you're not, you, you can't fix what you're not tracking. Okay. That's the most critical part of all marketing. And this is one area where we can actually track these AI generated responses. Okay. So the second one that they found is that 40% of usage comes from what is considered doing. So most people I talk to are using chat GPT a lot of the time for writing and maybe a little bit of coding, but that doesn't seem to be very, uh, one of the biggest use cases, but probably writing is one of the core things. Now, when I'm, I'm there's three different categories here that they've kind of lumped all queries into, let's say, say three buckets of intent. The asking queries are the most important. Those are the ones we really want to focus on. So I'll show you an example. If you go into Google Search Console, you can actually run this rejects in here. Okay. So you go into Google Search Console. I'll drop this below the video. Uh, I'll give you some templates that you can just copy. Uh, but go ahead and put this, this rejects in here. And then you hit apply. And what this is going to do is going to help us see all of the queries that have this kind of asking based on intent that fall into that bucket. Okay. So what I would like to do is see by position and then start to look at the queries where we're not doing a very good job. And then we can decide how can we attack these queries on our own website? How can we attack these queries on YouTube? How can we attack these queries on maybe even a LinkedIn pulse article? You know, anywhere where Google, like Google or uh, any search engine that, you know, we know is used for retrieval, we want to drive as much visibility on those platforms as possible because we know it's going to influence AI generated response when it goes to retrieve answers. Okay. We know that that is, that is universally true. Okay. So you want to go through these and you want to make sure you're tackling every single one of these questions. If you can, this doesn't always mean you're going to take one of these and build a brand new asset. That doesn't make a lot of sense because you're going to end up just creating a bunch of thin content, but you can look at these little topics and then go to the page that's, you know, performing well for these, at least maybe within the top 100 or so and look for opportunities. Can we kind of squeeze in this topic in this one asset? If not, if it's a totally different topic, then it would warrant maybe, you know, building a dedicated page. So you got to take it by a case by case basis, but these are just like tons of opportunities that you can go and attack just by using a very simple rejects formula. Once again, I'll drop it below the video. Okay. So those are the most important one of those asking based intent. The next are doing, these are a little bit trickier because you're not always going to surface brands right away. Okay. This is why I didn't give it like a full check. It's kind of like halfway. 
because most of these are not going to serve as brands. However, this is when the sales journey compression comes into play. Okay. So an example, look, before I jump into that, which is, uh, I need to set up seat based billing with trials for our SaaS, which platforms support this. Give me three to five options with pricing page links and setup docs. Okay. So the pretty intense prompt and no one's going to be putting this very likely into chat GPT without a bunch of questions prior to this. And I'll show you why in a second. Another one example here, just let's say in the, in the context of e-com, another example here in the context of local. Okay. But this is really important because most in this, this bucket are not going to just start here. These are ending queries. These are ending prompts. Okay. So this is the most important thing to understand about this current situation with chat GPT or a, any AI generated type of platform, uh, that includes perplexity and Claude and Grok and you, you name it. Okay. So before this is pretty much the, the standard buyer's journey. Okay. And it's pretty erratic going through many different platforms and different stages. And it could take, depending if it's B2B versus B2C, it could take longer if it's B2B, shorter if it's B2C. So it just depends. But now things are very different where an entire buyer journey can happen in one chat, right? In one chat window in, let's say, you know, in, in the context, like anecdotally for me, I've purchased in, you know, within 30 minutes going through one sales journey within one chat, right? I, I started with the problem that I had and ended up at the end where I discovered like, okay, I guess I need to go and buy this plugin or buy this tool or invest in this software. Okay. So I went through that whole journey in 30 minutes and I got my problem solved very, very fast. So this is kind of what this would look like in a real life scenario, right? So we start at problem awareness, which is like, you know, we're about to roll out a SaaS product, but I'm not sure what the billing setup should look like. What are the main pricing models other SaaS companies use? Okay. So you're starting very top of the funnel, very problem aware. You know, there's not really any product awareness at this point. Okay. And then we go down deeper. Now we're starting to get a little more specific, uh, you know, about the, the ideal client profile that they go after. And then we're starting to think about uh, the specific goals that they're trying to achieve in this context. And then finally they hit a roadblock, right? And when that roadblock is hit within that chat window, um, you know, like this example, I don't know what tools can actually do this, which billing platforms are best at handling seat-based billing with trials, okay? So you see it's a very specific problem that they're trying to solve. And the next logical step here is that ChatGBT is likely to recommend some, some software products, right? Some, some solutions to this problem. And this is the point where the money will be made, okay? You're not gonna make money in these early stages. You're not gonna drive brand awareness here, but it's this whole process that's gonna lead to the high conversions. And there's a lot of conflicting data about you know traffic from, uh, referral traffic from ChatGPT converts better than Google traffic. I don't find that to be, that's probably not very accurate because the thing is we're not just concerned about driving referral traffic from ChatGPT. While that's great, that would absolutely be amazing. You can track that inside of Google Analytics. Uh, that's not actually what the biggest one is. The biggest one is getting your brand covered in that AI generated response. So then now we have brand awareness, which then leads to this next stage, which is the most important, which is branded searches. Okay. This is where the magic happens. The more visibility we have in chat GBT for the queries that actually matter to the business, the more likelihood we have that we're actually going to drive branded searches back to Google. These two platforms, there's now, I think a study just came out that uh, most users, I think it's like 95% of chat GBT users also use Google and vice versa. Right. So th like th these things are not killing each other. They're actually working together. They're supplementing each other and they're both going to, you know, probably rise together. I, you know, this, this concept of Google dying or chat GPT dying, I don't see that happening really, unless some crazy, you know, huge development comes here soon, but at least in the near future, the thing that marketers and SEOs need to focus on is getting the brands visible in AI generated responses and making them get as much coverage as possible for commercial queries with the idea of driving branded searches. You have to almost treat it as if it's LinkedIn or X or even YouTube in some context. Like the goal is we're, we're doing marketing. Okay. We're doing marketing. And if we do good marketing, we drive branded searches and we know the branded searches 
are much higher probability of conversion than just standard, let's say, informational queries. Okay. Branded searches are very, very powerful and they drive really good conversion. So the people are a little too focused on trying to track direct conversions from ChatGPT when more than likely most conversions are not going to be that direct. And in fact, that's not really how anyone purchases anything online anyway. Okay. All right. So the final one, which is only 11% of the total usage on ChatGPT, is what's considered expressing. Okay, so these are the worst queries for us to target as SEOs or marketers, okay? Because you basically no chance of getting any brand uh, to to be surfaced in that AI generated response. So an example would be like you know, role play as a skeptical CMO interviewing me for 15 minutes about rankability. Keep it tough but fair, okay? Yeah, that's cool, but that's not going to help, you know, like if you're, if you're working with a client, how is this going to help them get more business? It's not. Okay. It's not. All right. So this is very, very important. I would, I would dig through that. You know, if you want to, you have some, some reading, go through this report. But the truth is this is the most like important SEO element of this report is ultimately focusing on, you know, these queries that matter the most, which is doing right. This, these queries are very important. So this is, you know, that with the, uh, buyer compression and the sales journey compression inside one chat window with the intent to drive branded searches. And then the same is with, you know, with these in particular, which is the asking intent. These are the most important ones. These are the, the queries you should be tracking. These are the queries that you should be trying to, uh, you want to measure a couple things. Number one, is our brand appearing in these responses for commercial queries specifically? And number two, within that response, where does our brand show up? Okay. So the first one though is like, are we actually showing up? That's just a simple zero or one type of equation. It's pretty binary in that way. The other one is more about where do we show up? Okay. Those two things matter a lot and that's where the tracking should, should come in. Now, some good news about tracking. I, you've probably seen there's like a billion, you know, AI search rank tracking tools out there. Um, funny enough, you know, rankability ranks well for best AI search rank tracking tools because we're coming out with our own. Uh, but in the meantime, I have something that's going to be much better than you just going and blowing thousands of dollars on an AI search tracking tool. Okay. I just completed the AI search tracking and analytics certification inside of Gotcha SEO Academy. There's a few different tracking mechanisms that you, you know, I'm going to be teaching, but the biggest one is I'm going to show you, first of all, how to track uh, brand mentions and rankings within the AI generated responses without needing any paid software. You can actually do this. There is, as long as you have a good template and you know how to use Looker Studio, which I show you how to do, uh, you can track this. Okay. You can't do it. At a, at a high scale, right? You can't do it like across a million campaigns, but you can do it pretty decently. And in fact, it's actually more accurate doing the way that I show than using a lot of these tools, which a lot of the tools are just, you know, API wrappers to be totally honest. So, um, so this is much more effective because it's gonna show you the logic and the process behind actually setting this up uh, in Looker Studio and ultimately using Google Analytics, using Google Search Console, using all free software, okay? So this is a certification that's gonna be within Gotcha SEO Academy. And within Gotcha SEO Academy, you're literally getting everything. You're not just getting this, but you're getting uh, all my other training programs, you're getting the community and you're getting twice a week coaching. So it's a steal. Um, and then I'm also coming out with the AI search certification. So if you're interested, I'll have a link below this video, you can apply. We don't accept everyone. Um, but if you're, if you're serious about really winning an AI search, uh, and continuing to do really well just for SEO in general, the good news is, you know, uh, doing good SEO does translate really well to AI search platforms. It's not exactly one to one like that, but it, it is, it is very, very impactful for influencing these platforms. Um, but this is the most critical part. You have to be able to track it before you can improve it. And so that's why I started with this program first, because I want to show you how you can actually go about doing this. So if you're interested, there'll be a link below and thank you so much for watching.